Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Bus TV Chan. Um, I'm in the tow truck right now in the heavy duty wrecker, and I got a truck hooked up back there. And some of you guys are asking me how to hook up trucks, so I'm going to show you how I hooked up this truck using the fifth wheel and chaining it up by the axle and using the fifth wheel and everything that I use. Now, I already have it hooked up, so I'm going to show you how I unhook it. So, uh, come on back here and let's take a look. So as you can see, it's hooked up by the fifth wheel, and there's four chains holding it up by the axles. So I have a remote here. So I'm going to shoot it out. I'm going to push it out all the way. Let's go back in just a little bit for a little bit of play. Come down. All right. So typically you have these safety chains that you go from here to the truck to somewhere secure like the frame or around here the cross the center cross member just in case anything happens or anything breaks it'll still stay connected to the truck so it won't go anywhere so this is the setup it's called the tow buddy tow bud it goes right into the fifth wheel and it connects to the axles chain up chain the axles like that and it holds the axle up because otherwise what happens is the axles seep down now this is this truck has a low roof but in order to have a lower clearance what you would do is chain up this axle so that it's higher off the ground also some suspensions can come out while you're driving so it's always a good idea to chain up the axle when you're towing so I'm gonna remove these chains from this side it's really easy it's just a J hook chain that goes around and holds the axle up. This one came loose now because I put it down. But that's what it should like. Just should look like hooked right around the axle there. So I'm gonna get my gloves on and take that off. Still a little tight, so I gotta go in. Alright, now I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. So now we just pull the fifth wheel release which is going to unlock the locking pin from the kingpin. So it's out. I'm just going to go up a little bit. So it's still locked in. So I'm going to try that again. Just got to play around with it and put it in a sweet spot. Okay, so it's a little bit high, so I'm going to come down just a little bit like that and try it again. Alright, see, it's all the way out now. I can just go in. And fold it back up. See the see the kink pin on the end of there it's the same thing that's on the bottom of a trailer it hooks right into the fifth wheel of a tractor it's a little tall so I'm gonna bring the boom down so that's how the tow buddy connects to a tractor when you're towing it from the rear you just have to chain up the axles use your safety chains and there's two other things I'm gonna show you right now one more thing I wanted to mention is the reason you also use the chains on each side of the stinger or the underreach is what we call it. This whole thing is called the stinger or the underreach is so that this doesn't articulate back and forth while you're in transit. So the only one articulation point would be here at the kingpin 
inside the fifth wheel it would spin there only because otherwise this moves back and forth as you're turning for other types of connections besides the fifth wheel connection so that's another reason why we use chains on both sides when you're towing trucks you always got to make sure everything's secure so I can see that there's straps on here and the driver strapped everything down but it's always good to double check things like this I think these can hit the ground and these get damaged and scratched and they'll be unusable and you'll have to either buy them or fix them or so to prevent any damage or loss you just make sure everything's secure especially when they have stuff on the catwalk or a headache rack like this and they also have shovels and stuff and everything like that when you're towing a vehicle from the back you also have to be you have to take a look at this because it's like a big kite going down the road going 65 miles an hour on the turnpike these can fall off so if there's any cracks on these or anything like that then you have to put a strap around it and strap them together these are called cab extenders I call them cab extenders they extend from the cab on both sides by the way we're towing a Freightliner Cascadia it's a mid-roof sleeper truck so we're required to have lights in the rear so that's my stop tail turn and also an amber warning light usually you would put it here on the outside but I was in a little bit of a rush and put it up there but it's better when you put it on the grill when you use bungees to put it on the grill because cars that are lower to the ground can't always see all the way up there especially if they're really close to you so I recommend putting it here so the last thing you have to do is usually the first thing I put away and usually the last thing I do when I'm hooking it up is you have to secure the steering wheel because otherwise the truck will go all over the place when you're towing it so I always use two straps and I always strap it down to something that won't move because the seat moves forward and back and up and down so it wouldn't be good to go here because as you can see the seat as I'm letting the air out will go up and down and you'll lose you know your tightness on your straps this here in the bottom frame of the seat that will never move so that's why I use that and I use two straps one on each side and I'm always mindful of the buttons and other kind of things that would be here that drivers or different types of trucks might have Another good um, thing to do is take the, the uh, seat belt and come around here and go to and lock the seat belt in and you might have to put the seat all the way forward and just in case one of these two straps break you always have a backup and just in case so that the truck won't go swerving left to right with uncontrollable steering. So yeah, that's how you tow a tractor from the rear from the fifth wheel. Before I let you guys go, I'm going to show you a couple things about my wrecker. This is a Miller truck with a Peterbilt. The body is made by Miller and the chassis and the cab is from Peterbilt. I'll show you the inside in a minute. But over here there's other controls. We can use these controls as well to, to, to move the stinger instead of using the remote. These are what we call forks. You put these on what we call receivers on the stinger or the underreach and there's different sizes. These are called Miller shorties and these fit most axles like Freightliner, Cascadia's, Kenworths, like most tractors when you're going to grab them from the front, the axle, you can use these. But sometimes these are too short because you have lower lower stuff on the newer trucks that's overhanging so you have to get something taller like the one in the back that's a little bit taller. So to keep the most, the forks I use mostly, I put them here, the Miller Shorties and the little, little bit taller ones. They're a little bit wider too than the Miller Shorties. And on this side are the other two pieces. So I. So when I put the singer down, I can just go right in here and hook up. For example, if I wanted to hook up here to this differential, I would put the fork here and I could lift the truck by these two sides with the forks. But I always have to make sure that I chain up this axle so it doesn't sag down. You can also tow from the bolts here, that bolt there, and that bolt there. There's these cups that go right inside there and you just chain it down you can tow like that too. I'll show you what those look like right now. These are some of the other forks for different size things that you need to fork. And these are the cups I was telling you about. Those bolts sit right in there and you run chains or straps over it to secure it so it doesn't pop out. You always run chains or straps over any of the forks so they, so they don't pop out. Sometimes you put fire hose on top of the forks, like this, so that we're wherever towing, whatever we're towing is metal on metal, it doesn't slide back and forth, it has more resistance. So we stuff that in there and then we can lay the axle 
on top of here or the differential like I showed you over there before. Here's a couple of more different size forks. Now sometimes when the forks are, so, are too short, we use what's called, uh, I forgot what, what the correct term for these are, but basically you stick that in the bottom and then you put your forks on here. We call them risers, they're called risers. And then the forks are become higher so you can go around different obstacles under the truck so you're not scraping stuff when the truck is bouncing up and down. Speedy dry, always keep speedy dry in case there's a uh, oil spill, traffic cones, and there's plenty of wood in there. Shovel, broom to clean up, and a height stick so we always know how tall uh, the load is or the truck that I'm towing. Because uh, it can't be above 13.6 without a permit. Another one, also, you don't want to hit bridges or power lines. So it's always a good idea to see how high your truck is that you're towing if you're not completely short. So in here is a wheel lift. So instead of going by the axle or hooking it up from the fifth where like I showed you, there's pieces that you can put together that will go around the tires. You know, you kind of cup the tires on each side and you can lift the entire truck by the tires. And that's another, you have a lot of choices that you could do when you're trying to tow a vehicle. So that's another one you can do. It's called a wheel lift. And you grab it by the wheel. You always have to chain up that axle if you're towing it from the rear or from the front. You don't have to worry about chaining it because it's going to be touching the ground anyway. So, I like to use the wheel lift, but it's a lot of work and these pieces are very heavy. They're pretty heavy and it's not just those two pieces. There's more pieces in here. These are the rest of the pieces. These are, this is a Freightliner tow hook. So if you want to pull someone out of the mud, this is made to stick right in the front of a Freightliner Cascadia. These are Volvo tow hooks. I have Kenworth tow hooks. All the different trucks I have the tow hooks. This is uh, something you put on the back so you can tow trailers. It's got a hitch back there so you can haul the trailer like that. And then also on this part you would add this and that's a fifth wheel plate. So I can, I can hook up a trailer to the back of my truck. These are the receivers I was telling you about. The forks that I was showing you earlier, they slide either in here or on here depending on where you need it on the axle or where you're trying to line, line up to. These are called receivers. These are D-rings. You can use these to pull people out, or there's a lot of different reasons you might need to use those. We have plenty of those. These are all a lot of straps you can use. If you don't want to use chains, you can use straps to pull things, flip things over. A lot of different recovery work you could do with those straps. There's the wireless light bar. This is an airline, so if you're towing a truck from the front, all trucks or buses or commercial vehicles that have air brakes, you need to supply air to the vehicle in order to release the brakes. Unless you want to cage the brakes, that's something different. You have to go under the truck and stick a pin inside the brake chamber and twist it and it backs off the brakes from the truck so it can really, so it can you know drive easily. It's your choice whether you want to hook up air or cage the brakes. These are different wires for lighting, for hooking up lighting to trailers hooking air to trailers. These are all my airlines. And then I have some extra wood in here in case I need to. There's a lot of things you can do with wood in this industry. This is my blanket in case I get cold at night. Uh, this is to protect stuff. A couple of straps. This is the main control panel. And you can do everything from here. The spades, which are the feet on the bottom. They go in and out when you're winching stuff out so the truck doesn't move. Um, this controls all the booms. The winch cables, there's two cables up there under reach in and out and to fold and there's some extra straps so yeah that's that's the main control if you don't want to use the remote or if you don't want to use this because the winches aren't on here and the winches are not on the remote same thing on this side it has a little bit less but you got to use the other side that has everything on the other side got a wheel chalk and some wood there and some more d-rings over here is these are all my tools because sometimes you have to pull a drive shaft. If you're towing from the front, you have to either pull the axle or the drive shaft. Otherwise, you could damage the transmission depending on how far you're going and what kind of transmission the vehicle has. These are the chains I was showing you earlier that we use to tie up the axle. These are like these are called J-hooks. These are Omega chains, and we use those chains to go around the axle to when we're forking stuff so that the axle or whatever we're forking doesn't pop out while we're driving down the road. So we always use those, and we use a binder to ratchet everything tight so it doesn't come loose while we're going down the road. This is all the basic tools we have for towing. 
This is called a caging pin. This is what you stick inside the brake chamber if you don't want to hook up air. You put that in the brake chamber and there's a bolt and a washer on the other side and you just tighten it down until the brakes are no longer touching the drum anymore. And this is my air kit. If I'm gonna hook up air, I bring this kit with me over to the truck. And you go into the fuel tank, and usually the drivers have like this on the end where they could turn this to release their air. And I'll just take this off, and I'll hook this into it, and then I hook my hose into this. And then on the back of my truck, there's a connection where I can hook up into my airline. show you guys right now there's a connection on the back of the truck where I hook up my airline here and then I can supply air to the truck go into the truck that I'm towing and release the brakes this is where you would normally hook up a trailer lights but we have a wireless transmitter here and that's what the lights I was showing you earlier is all signal through wireless and then here's just your old-fashioned you take these off and you can hook up your airlines for if, you know if you're gonna haul the trailer or whatever so you would hook it up there all right just one more thing i'm going to show you guys now i'll show you the inside real quick and then i gotta get out of here these are all the chains we use we use a lot of chains these are called snatch blocks and you use these to direct the line of the winch to a lower position or a different position or to make the line stronger there's a lot of different things you can use snatch blocks for we have plenty of them here extra binders and different size of chains you can see the different size different thickness for different types of jobs there's plenty of chains in there also a guide of the weights of the chains and straps so that way you have a good idea also the chains have tags on them to let you know what grade they are and the weight rating this is a side pulling winch where we can pull this is another winch that we have on the truck as you can see there, these legs go down and you can pull things from the side so you don't have to close down the whole road if you're trying to get a vehicle out. So this is the record that I drive. It's a Peterbilt. It's pretty new, it's brand new pretty much. I think it's a 2020. We added these emergency lights on the front. It came, came with those amber ones, but we added amber and clear on the front. And we have the two corner lights up there. And then there's a main main light bar up there. As you can see, it's kind of hard to see because it's bright, but the lights are showing the traffic to move over to the right. It's called a traffic advisor. And I leave it like that because usually I'm on the right side of the road, so I want everybody to move over to the left. That's what I meant to say. But in here, I can change it. I can turn it off. See, traffic advisor. I can turn it off. And then the light bar will just flash in a regular mode. Or if I'm on the left side of the road and I want people to move to the right, I could hit the switch that way. And it makes traffic, it advises traffic to move to that side, as you can see. All right, I'll show you the inside real quick, and then I gotta get out of here. This is where I charge my wireless remote, it just sits right there. This is the uh, Peterbilt dashboard here. So our miles, 23,292. Diesel exhaust, regular gas, uh, not gas, diesel, sorry about that. Coolant temperature, RPMs, miles per hour, air pressure, and oil pressure. Over here is our Peterbilt Kenworth Packard interface. We've got mirrors that are facing all directions, the side of the truck, the driver, the front of the truck, the rear of the truck. There's mirrors, I mean, there's uh, cameras underneath the mirrors there. This is my other camera system that's used for the Stinger. So I could back up and hook up to the fifth wheel. And I don't really have to get out of the truck until I have to put those J-chains on. CB radio up here. Allison six-speed automatic transmission with Jake brake. There's a temperature control. There's a parking brake for trailer supply and... and uh, and the parking brake, these two switches don't do anything. These are other switches you could do. So this is an emergency vehicle, so you can turn off the DEF feature of the truck, so you can never be derated. So emergency vehicles have this switch because 
we work in emergency situations like near fires or we don't want the truck getting really really hot during a D rate so all emergency commercial vehicles have this switch fire trucks have that switch police command centers stuff like that always have a switch like that otherwise you can't you can't have that switch you have to go into D ray mode and uh, regen the truck you don't have a choice this here is a winch brake so if I turn this on it applies really really a lot of pressure to my brakes more than the parking brake so the truck doesn't roll while I'm winching something this is a suspension drop it takes all the air out of the bags and lowers the truck and these two are locking differentials you can see this locks the rear differential and these lock the two differentials all together so that it's kind of like a four-wheel drive kind of thing so if you're in the mud and you need to get power to all wheels you would have you would turn these on or if you're in a gravel you would always want to turn those on this is the trolley valve engine fan this is the lighting how, how bright you want it this is the uh this is the knob this is the lighting here this is the knob you can use to use this it has different functions headlights and clearance lights this is another this is an emergency light beacons on the front this is the fog lights this is not used but if this was a tractor like a regular tractor they would have lights in the back that you could turn on but we have a different switch light check this checks all the lights on the vehicles and the backup alarm and the four-way switch this is the marker light interrupt switch this is windshield wipers you push this in for the uh, fluid to come out turning indicators up and down here's the Jake brake you can have three stages one two and three over here you can change the volume change the radio station mute and do some options on the radio here cruise controls on this side and this is the panel for all the lights. This is the power takeoff. We turn that on. I'm going to turn it off now. This gives power to everything in the back of the truck, but it also controls the traffic advisor. So if I have the switch over to the right, it's going to turn that on. I'm going to turn that off now. Main beacon, auxiliary beacon, is, there's red lights in the rear that will flash. That's a different button for that. I'm going to turn those off. We don't need those. Toolbox lights, lights up all the toolboxes so I can see at night. This is the amber and white grill lights and, and the amber and white lights on the rear and the side of the vehicle. It's just another, there's all different kinds of lights on here you can use for different situations. This doesn't do anything and this turns everything on and everything off. These are just all white lights facing rear so at night you can light up the whole scene depending on where. Up, higher, lower, in the middle, underneath the truck, there's different areas. And I have a spotlight so I can see if I'm looking for truck numbers at night, this helps a lot too. Windows control. That's pretty much it guys this is um, in case that's in case you want to eat your meal while you're driving down the road I guess or your passenger so yeah that's it guys I got to go finish the paperwork I got to get the VIN number and I got to get the mileage and the plate number of the truck I just towed and write down the company name finish up my paperwork and I'm gonna get out of here so if you have any questions about the tow truck let me know I'm more than happy to answer you I just wanted to show you some guys were asking me about it so there you go. That's one way I hook up a truck through the fifth wheel. Take care, guys, and we'll see you at the next one.